Hi guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. I am Venu Gopal from Team Cloudy ML. So what we are given here? So we are given a 2D square matrix. So this is a 2D square matrix that we are given as an input, and we need to write a function uh, which takes this 2D matrix as an input. So this 2D matrix should be taken as an input. And we need to return a clockwise rotated matrix. So this is the matrix. So let us try to understand the test case now. So we have this matrix, right? So we have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So this is like the 3 by 3 matrix. And we need to rotate this in clockwise direction. So in clockwise direction, 90 degrees, okay? So if you rotate this, what we'll get is this whole row is set as the last column, right? So that is what it is happening here. And the second one is set to be the second last of the next rotated matrix. In the similar way, this is set to be the first column of the rotated matrix. So that's what we are seeing here, right? So this is the pattern that we observed by looking into the original matrix. Original matrix. And the rotated matrix okay so this is what we observe so this will be a first approach so whatever we have discussed right now that will be the first approach because see here we need what we need to do is we need to write a, write the code in such a way that we are taking uh, we are creating a new matrix so this will be the new matrix okay and this will be n cross and uh, like three by three matrix because the input is 3 by 3, right? So in the similar way, we'll create an n cross n matrix, which is same as the original one, but all the internal values will be initialized with some a random number, or we can say all with zeros, okay? Now what we want to do is, we need to take each and every row of the matrix, and we need to put it, like, we need to put, uh, fill this next matrix, or the rotated matrix, from the back. Like, from the last column, we need to, Fill this okay in this way we'll be filling it okay so we'll be taking this one two three this is the first row and we'll be putting it as the last column of the rotated matrix in the similar way we'll be taking this four five six this is the second row of the original matrix and we'll be putting it as the last second column of the rotated matrix so this will be the first approach okay now let us quickly look into the next approach so what will be the next approach now, let us try to un uh, like understand in a much better way. Let us analyze this image in a much better way. What is this A transpose? A, a, a is equal to, that is A transpose, right? So this is A transpose. Let us try to understand what is A transpose. So if we transpose this, what we'll get? We'll get this 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, and 3, 6, 9, right? Now, compare this A transpose. This is A transpose is nothing but the ma transpose of the matrix. If we compare this with this, what is happening? What is happening? We are just reversing each and every row, right? So if we reverse this, reverse each row. If we reverse each row, what is happening? We are getting 7, 4, 1. 8, 5, 2, 9, 6, 3, right? So this is the reverse of the transposed matrix. So from this, what did we get the approach? So we are taking this original matrix as an input and then we are performing original transpose. So we are just performing transpose operation and what we are doing is we are reversing reverse each row okay so after doing this we will be getting the rotated matrix itself so just try to observe the pattern so here 147 was 741 it was nothing but after doing the transpose if we re uh, reverse the row that will give us this rotated matrix this is like the second approach which is a uh, much better uh, than the previous one so these two were the approaches for this rotation of the matrix now coming up we'll be trying to code this up like how we can uh, like code this approach one 
approach one and we can also look into the coding of the approach two okay so these two will be seen in the coding part so let us quickly dive into that so let us look into the first uh, approach so what is the first approach so we are giving uh, the code snippet in this uh, similar way right so we, we have this uh, matrix and we have this approach one that is written we need to create a new matrix with the same number of rows and columns as the original one and we need to set the new matrix columns in reverse order as the row values of the original matrix so that's what we discussed here right so whatever the rows are there we need to fill the rotated matrix on the back side of the columns okay so that's what we are doing uh, we are going to do here so let us quickly code this up so we'll, uh, we'll initialize this rows to the length of the matrix because length of the matrix will fetch the number of rows right and we'll initialize this column's name uh, to the length of the first sorry so matrix right length of the first uh, row okay so that is nothing but the length of uh, length of the columns right so that is what uh, that that will fetch us the number of columns because one two three so this is our first row if we take the length of this we'll have this number of columns so that's what we have done here now once we have initialized it it's time to initialize this rotated matrix okay so how we can initialize that so rotated matrix will be will be initializing each and every uh, value as zero so this is like a simple snippet that will uh, initialize uh, and cross an empty matrix with all values as zero and range so what we are doing is so this is simply a list comprehension wherein we are for each number of rows we are creating another uh, for each row we are creating this uh, sort of column Okay, let me try to visualize this. So if I do it like this, so this is like initializing in this way: zero comma zero comma zero, zero comma zero comma zero, and this is like the list of lists. Okay, so that's what we are doing in the code snippet. We are uh, based on the number of columns. We are just creating this list and we are appending it to the whole matrix itself. So that's what we are doing here. It is done in simple list comprehension. Now let us move on to the main coding part. Now what we want to do is, uh, we want to uh, put each and every row into the column of the rotated matrix, right, from the back side. So that can be done using two loops. So first of all, for i and range, number of rows, and for j in range, number of columns. Now what we want to do is uh, for rotated matrix we are putting the values in rotated matrix right so for rotated matrix of j so j is nothing but the uh, row row of that particular uh, rotated matrix and we need to get the last last column right so that uh, we can get that last column using this columns minus i minus one so if we have c column let's say we have three columns and if the i is 2 t minus 2 minus 1 so this will be like the zero so this will be the zeroth uh, column right so that is what uh, it will uh, fetch us now uh, i is if i is 3 if i is 3 t minus uh, it will it won't be 3 right because the range is 0 to 3 so it will be 0 comma 1 comma 2 right so if i is 2 then we'll get this zero and if i is 1 like if uh, let's say from 0 we'll, we are taking right so 3 minus 0 minus 1 2 2 is nothing but the last column right so 2 index is nothing but the last column so that's what we are doing here we are fetching this j j is nothing but the row and we are getting the last column and we are just putting that value as matrix of i and j so what's happening here is we are getting this value so this is nothing but one so we are getting this one and we are putting it in here okay and then what we are getting is we are getting uh, the value present at the first row and the second column and we are putting it as the value at the second row first uh, uh, second row and the third column 
that's what we are doing here in the loop also that's what it's happening now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just return that uh, rotated metric okay so that's what we are doing in the first approach now let us try to execute let's see if we are getting any errors or not so no so we didn't get any errors so that means we have executed it properly so one two three four four five six seven it's uh, happening the same so one two three is the first row right it should be the last column one three four so that's what happened here and even the second row should be the second last column so four five six seven is the second last column four five six and seven similar way remaining all follows the same order so that's the first approach now let us come to the second approach what's the second approach is we need to first find the transpose of the matrix and once we have found this transpose of the matrix we just need to reverse each and every row okay so that can be done very easily so let us uh, fetch us this number of rows as length of matrix the similar way i'll get the number of columns as length of matrix so first row and then we need to perform the transpose of the matrix so this is like the simple code uh, wherein we are just putting this lower triangular matrix as the upper triangular matrix so this can be run uh, like this can be done using two loops itself so so for i and drain number of rows and for k in drain number of columns what we are going to do is we are just going to swap the values so transpose is nothing but what let us understand the transpose also so this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is 1 4 7 2 5 8 3 6 9 what we are done so one will be one here uh, one itself the present the value that is present here at four is being swapped with the value at two right so these two are being swapped these two are being swapped okay these two are being swapped so these two are being swapped. so whatever this diagonal sort of things are there two, those two are getting swapped okay so we are do gonna do that operation here we are gonna just swap the values at matrix of i and j so swapping can be done uh, in simple way in uh, this whole uh, python right a comma b is equal to b comma a will swap us the values that are present in a and b right so we are, we are going to do that thing uh, itself so what we are going to do is we are going to swap the values that are present at uh, i comma uh, i comma j and j comma i so matrix of i comma j and matrix of i j and i right so we are going to swap those values See. Sorry for the typo. Matrix of i. So what's happening here is we are just swapping the values that are present at this i comma j and j comma i uh, with uh, themselves. So this will uh, give us the transpose of the matrix. Now what we want to do is we want to return like reverse each and every row in that particular matrix. So for i in range number of rows, what we are going to do is matrix of that particular row is equal to matrix of i and we'll just reverse so for reversing uh for reversing each and every row we can do this we are just accessing that particular row and we can reverse that row using the slicing operation right wherein we are just uh, not specifying any start and stop and we are putting the last one as the minus one so this will reverse each and every row of that particular matrix and finally we will be returning this same matrix and try, let us try to execute this okay so there is something wrong which we are doing so let us try to figure that out the rows are same and we are getting the column and for i in range rows okay so we are just uh, we just need to access the lower triangular matrix right so for that we just need to iterate over that particular row itself okay so let's try to understand so what we want to do is so this is the array right one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, this is the matrix right what we want to do is whatever this is there we just need to uh have those values right so in the first row we just want this element and the second row we want these two and the third we want these three right so we just need to access up to uh, so this is 0 1 2 right 
so we just need to access the element up to i plus one elements where i is the row row number okay so if i is zero so we we just need to access this number so zeroth number and we uh, if i is one we need to access up to four five itself and if i is two we need to access zero one two okay so that's what we need to do right after we are accessing that we are just swapping those numbers okay we are just performing the swap so that's what we are doing here now if we try to execute this yeah so this output is same 11 7 4 1 12 8 5 2 and 13 so this is same so those were the two approaches wherein in the first approach what we were doing is we were just accessing these rows we were putting each and every row as uh, and for, like we created a new matrix and we were filling this new rotated matrix from the backwards of column so from the back we are filling it and how we were filling we are just putting the rows as the columns from the back side and for the second approach what we were doing is we tried to analyze the images in much better way or the matrix in much better way and we found that uh, after performing the transpose of the matrix we can just reverse and each uh, reach and every row so that will fetch the same rotated matrix itself so which one was efficient so this is like a question for you uh, we can say the second approach is efficient right because we are not using any extra space here in the first matrix though the complexities are same for both of them in the first uh, first approach we were using this extra rotated matrix space right so that was the extra space that we were utilizing in the first approach but when we come to the second approach there is no extra space that we are utilizing so this is the best solution like the second approach is the best one wherein we have this n square as the time complexity so we'll have in this approach to we just the color and the approach to so the approach to what is the time complexity it's nothing but order of n square where n is the uh, uh, n is the dimension of the matrix and the space complexity is one whereas for the approach one for the approach one what's the time complexity? the time complexity is order of n square even the space complexity is orbiter of n square where n is the dimension of the matrix so from this we can say efficient like uh, the efficient approach is approach two okay efficient approach is approach two okay so that's all for this video guys i hope you understand the problem statement and you understood the approach as well so that's all for this video guys let let us meet in some other problem and try to code that as well so still then keep practicing keep learning thank you if you enjoyed the content till now please do like and share this video with others and please do subscribe our channel